Yes, good morning students. Uh, I'm happy to welcome you to this class. We are still talking under hydrostatics uh, and I hope we'll finish it by the course of the week. So today, in the last class, we talked about the pressure, how we can measure pressure in the measure the instrument. And now we want to talk about the magnitude, positions and directions of the resultant force. So we want to uh, know how we can uh, get the magnitude positions and the directions of the resultant force. So the first scenario we have to talk about horizontally immersed surface, as you can see. So this ending surface is horizontally immersed. So we are told to consider a horizontal object uh, which is immersed or on the surface of the water, as shown here. So we say that force on horizontal force or horizontal resultant force is given a specific weight of the fluid above the mass surface times the volume of the liquid. We know that specific weight of the fluid is given as alpha. Then we have to multiply by the V, which is the uh, sign of the volume. Or from or the knowledge know that volume is equal to the cross-sectional area times the depth. Where in this case depth we have to give us as X bar, which is the depth of the centroid. Therefore, for us to calculate the resultant of force of horizontally immersed surface, immersed liquid, we have to multiply the specific weight of the liquid times the cross-sectional area times the depth of the central, which is given as x bar. Therefore, we say that resultant force is given as uh, alpha area x bar, where alpha, we say, is the specific weight of the fluid. Then we say that now x bar is the depth of the centroid and we have the area of the fluid. x bar is the cross-sectional area of the fluid. So this is the area through which this fluid is occupied. So we have to get, is this a, 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 a fluid occupying a circular? Is it occupying a, a, a square? Is it occupying a rectangular? Is it uh, occupying a trapezium? So whatever is occupying on the, on the base, so that's what we have to multiply. You get the area of that, uh, of that object, then we have to multiply by the specific weight of this uh, liquid, of this fluid, then we have to multiply the depth from the centroid, which is given, we have the depth of x bar, this is the x bar from the bottom to above. So this one is saying the x bar. So we can have another uh, scenario where for this one we have the vertically immersed surface. The same for the vertically immersed surface, the formula still remains the same. We have the G, this now, for this time, so now we have the gravity, where we say the gravity is given us. The resultant force on the vertically immersed surface is given us of gravity times area times of depth of the depth of the central. We say we are, this one is given us of the space of the, 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 the gravity of the earth or the gravity of the specific weight, we have the gravity of the earth, this is normally given as or 9.81 or sometimes you can say you can take 10 as the your gravity times the depth, which is still have the depth of the central. Then we have the area, again we say is the area of the cross section, where it is going to be, you have to look at the, the, the shape of the object, is this square, is this circular, is this a uh, trapezium, then we just need the area of that. The third scenario we have to talk about the center pressure. Sometimes we give it as H bar, we call it the center pressure. So we are told that the force of the immersed surface on or the center pressure is not uniform, but normally it increases with the depth. So we have to consider an elemental strip which is against the elemental slope. And we are given that elemental strip, which is the force, is equal to uh, uh, the gravity of the up times the base of the area, which is the BD, with respect to the depth of the centroid, with respect to the depth of central. So for us to get the moment of force about the liquid at uh, the liquid surface, we have to differentiate, we integrate this one with respect to force. Therefore we get the gravity, which is equal to gravity, times base, times depth, times the uh, depth of the centroid square. Then you told that the sum of the moments of all the forces which are about the liquid surface, again we have to differentiate uh, the moment force, the moment of force. Uh, for us to get, we have to get uh, the gravity squared or the x bar squared, 
by the base times depth. So for this one, we are assuming that it's going to take of the rectangular square, where you know that the area of the rectangular square is BD. So the term of this one we say is equal to or the second moment area, the second moment of area. But we know that the sum of moments of the pressure will also equal to on the force times of the center pressure h bar, which also should also be equal to the gravity times the second area of moment. Therefore, we say that the gravity times the second area of moment should be equal to the specific weight of the liquid times the area of the base times the depth of the center times the uh, depth of the pressure. Where we say G is the gravity, or uh, IO is the second area moment, the force, or uh, the alpha is the specific weight of the fluid, where the X bar remains the depth of the centroid, then the X bar is the center of pressure. From that, now we can continue with the part. So we say from the parallel or uh, axis theorem, from the parallel theory, from the parallel axis theorem, axis theorem, from the parallel axis theorem, we know that uh, moment of inertia, which is known as IG, moment of inertia, is equal to uh, moment of inertia, total moment of inertia against the center of gravity. This moment of inertia against the uh, uh, center of gravity is given as uh, center of gravity uh, plus uh, the area uh, times the uh, depth of the centroid or uh, depth of the centroid squared over we can have to divide it area uh, by the second area uh, times the depth of the centroid. For that scenario, we will have to get uh, that the center H or Center pressure H bar will be given as a moment of inertia against the center of gravity plus uh, the depth of the centroid, then divided by our uh, area uh, times the depth of the centroid. This one is alone. It is moment of inertia against the center of gravity divided by area times the center of gravity plus the center of depth of centroid. Uh, by the plus center of droid centroid. So this one can get the area of RG, which is given as the radius of gyrations from the area of radius of gyrations. We'll have to get the radius of gyrations as moment of inertia against the center of gravity plus the area times uh, radius of gyration, radius of gyration squared. Therefore, our final x bar will have to get it as radius of the addition squared uh, over x uh, depth of the centroid depth of the centroid uh, plus uh, depth of centroid so we are saying where where r rg squared rg squared is equal to radius of gyration radius of gyration of uh, the x bar is equals to depth of central, depth of central. So that's how we can calculate. So there's an example we are told a rectangle water tank measuring. Let's do that example now. Let's do the example now. We are told that a rectangle water tank, let's draw it. So we are told a rectangular water tank uh, measuring 3 by 2 by 
uh, contains water up to a certain depth of 1.2 so the 1.2 our depth of centroid will be 1.2 uh, our length will be or uh, 3 then our width will be on depth this is the breadth then our depth will be 2 meters this meters this meters uh, then we are told to calculate the force of the uh, force and the set of the pressure for the liquid we know that at the bottom we have to calculate the areas at the bottom and we have to calculate the area against the depth the center pressure we say that for horizontal surface for horizontal surface horizontal surface we know that a force is given as a, a gravity at times the cross-sectional area times the x bar which is the depth of the depth of the centroid so for that scenario we have to get you can see this rectangular we have to multiply which is 9.81 this is the gravity of the earth times the area which is 3 by 1.4 oh, by 2 but now the center depth multiplied by 1.5 we have to multiply 1.2 so then we get that as 4 or 21.29 we get it as 21.2.191 uh, uh, newtons because we are talking about the force then we have to calculate uh, for the center H or for the center H for the center H we are told uh, that H bar is given as radius of the aeration, the squared uh, radius of the aeration, moment of inertia against the gravity over area times the x bar plus the x bar. So we have to get radius of the aeration is given as BB square cubed divided by area where the area we say is 3 by 2 times 1.2 plus 1.2. We'll have to get that as 0 0.8 0 point this one we have to get or 3 times or 2 cubed divided by 3 times 2 times 1.2 plus 1.2 which is a half of the x bar so this one is 6 we have to get 0 0.6 this half 1.2 divided by 2 since it is at at the middle of the depth which is given as 1.2 so we have to get that one as uh, total area we get to be 0.2 plus 0.6 our total or center H will have to get 0.8 or uh, force yeah. meters 0.8 meters then finally we can get for all the faces for these faces we assume that now this is our uh, rectangular box or term is going to this, this base this surface now we'll be having 2 by 1.2 because that one we have taken that one as the bottom to so say uh, for the smaller faces for the smaller faces we get that uh, force resultant force is given as area times center bar times the gravity we still have 9.81 times now 1.5 times 3 and then we have to multiply that one will give us if you multiply by that we have to get it 14.13 kilonewton 14.13 kilonewton but if you want to get the center uh, depth of center will have to get it as moment of inertia against the center of gravity divided by area times the depth of centroid or uh, then we have to add the a half of centroid this one will have to get or bd cube will be having two times or uh, 1.5 cube divided by 2 by 1.5 uh, times uh, 0 
0.75, then we have to add 0 0.75, and this one will have to get that as 0 0.799, which can say 0 0.8 meters. So from there, we we'll mark the end of this, our topic. Uh, if you meet in the next class, we'll have to talk about the hydrology, where under hydro hydrology, we are required to calculate uh, how uh, water is being found from the atmosphere, then procedure, uh, and how we can describe that procedure. Thank you.